It was a race of flawless strategy for Verstappen as he managed to take his Red Bull from 9th on the grid to take the chequered flag. But for the second weekend in a row, questions have been raised about the tyre life and the options that Pirelli brought to Florida. There's a lot to talk about, so here's my 5 things we earned from the Miami Grand Prix. My name's Andy, and this is Behind the Drive. Verstappen's Flawless Drive Max Verstappen lost out in qualifying as a mistake on his first run in Q3 resulted in him being under pressure to set a quick time on his second attempt. This created a situation where the Dutch driver was vulnerable to any incidents during those second quick runs. Realistically, given Miami is a street circuit and still quite new to the calendar, I believe it was a risk for the Red Bull team to send the driver out behind many others. It reminded me of the 2021 race in Qatar. The circuit was new to the calendar and some mistakes had already been made through the sessions up to that point. Hamilton opted to start his final run early, ensuring he would be able to compete before many of the other cars on track. Subsequently, a late yellow flag cost Verstappen. In Miami, there was significant track evolution, but given his speed up to that point in the session, I believe Verstappen could have still got pole if he'd gone out earlier in the session. Leclerc's mistake on his final run ended up triggering a red flag, and it feels like Max had time to complete his run by that point. As a result of that red flag though, we had an interesting starting grid, with Verstappen down in P9. Either way, the Red Bull car was dominant this weekend and it took just 14 laps for Verstappen to make his way to P2, an achievement that was even more impressive considering he managed to overtake on the hard tyres. Initially, it looked like he could struggle to make that progression. Once his tyres were warm, it looked effortless for him to get by the other cars with the power of DRS. Once in second position, Verstappen had just one more car to overtake, his teammate. This would be the most challenging given they both had the same car and the tyre differential with Perez on the mediums was significant. From this point, it became a race of strategy. Perez peeled off into the pits to stop for hard tyres and it became a question of how long Max could go before he chose to stop. Much like in Baku, it seemed like the hard tyres could go on for the majority of the race. So the longer Verstappen left it, the likelier it would be that he would get a cheap pit stop under safety car conditions. Just as Perez benefited from last weekend. With the later stop than the rest of the hard compound tyre runners though, Verstappen came out the pits just a couple of seconds behind his teammate, but this time he had the tyre advantage. After a couple of laps, Verstappen got the move done into turn one, completing what was one of his most flawless wins of his career. Verstappen's ability to consistently win from lower starting positions is a testament to his racing ability and also Red Bull's advantage over the other cars in 2023. If Perez stands any chance of competing for this championship, then he needs to ensure he capitalises on these kinds of races where he has an advantage over his teammate. Overall, it was a great race win for Verstappen. He was in control throughout and was patient when he needed to be at the start as his tyres warmed up. So it's certainly a green box for the Red Bull champion. Pirelli must be held to account. An elephant in the room after this race in Miami is the fact that the tyres selected by Pirelli have been at least one step too conservative once again. A component for good racing in F1 is interesting and variable strategy approaches. For two race weekends in a row, the one-stop medium to hard or hard to medium has been way too predictable. The strategy graphics including the two-stop option has been laughable and the teams have all been taking the same approach to their race strategy. There are potential solutions to this. One suggestion is that the FIA could mandate the use of all three tyre compounds in the Grand Prix if it's held in dry conditions. This feels even more artificial than it is already, but it could at least force two-stop races. Realistically though, Pirelli needs to be bringing the right tyres to each Grand Prix weekend. In Miami, the C2, the C3 and C4 were brought, and yes, there was a new track surface so tyre wear was less predictable, but there could be bigger differentials put to the hard tyre. For example, one way they could have approached it was to create an incredibly durable but much slower race tyre, forcing the teams into considering the alternate strategies. Alternatively, they could have just gone a step softer across the whole three compounds. At the same time, the Miami race is held on a street circuit which means overtaking isn't all that easy, so the use of a two-stop strategy would almost need to be significantly faster to be worth it for the teams and drivers. There's a lot that could be changed to artificially improve the racing, and the disappointing competition in 2023 has been worsened by the fact that the cars can't follow each other and the Red Bull team is so dominant. So it's things like tyre choice that needs to be perfect to make the racing at least a little bit interesting. As a result, I think Pirelli deserves a red box this weekend, and I hope that they can make better decisions through the rest of the season. Alonso's calm run to P3 
In 2023, it seems like the most likely podium order is going to be Verstappen, Perez and then Alonso. The Spaniard had another strong Grand Prix weekend as he started second, held that position until Verstappen came sailing past on lap 14 and then was in no man's land towards the end of the race with a very large gap to Russell behind and a big gap to Perez ahead. Alonso's season is going exceptionally well. He made the potentially best team move of his career coming into this year and he's been rewarded with a car that seems to be the second fastest on the grid right now. He's more motivated than he's been since the Ferrari era and seems to be loving Formula 1. He's now taken four podium finishes from five races and seems to be right up there each weekend despite his teammate occasionally struggling. With Stroll out so often, Alonso seems to be a mentor for his younger teammate. He was on the radio during the race commenting on Stroll's overtaking moves that he'd been watching on the big screens. Similarly, in Azerbaijan, he was recommending brake balances for Stroll to utilise. It was an exceptional performance from Alonso and I think he's on his way to his best championship finish in almost a decade. The only downside to Alonso's race was the fact that he was so far behind the Red Bulls. He finished about 21 seconds behind Perez and 26 seconds behind Verstappen. Realistically, this isn't really in his control and I think we can be confident that he's maximising his performance from his Aston Martin, so it's got to be a green box for his performance in Miami. Alpine show their capability. Alpine lost out on a great result back in Australia. The team were running well up the order before Gasly's desperate move on the final red flag restart resulted in him taking out his teammates and putting both cars out of the race. This opportunity to score great points came as a result of their car probably being the fifth fastest overall, with some differences coming at different track types. In Miami, the Alpines were strong again. Gasly managed to qualify fifth, which was a great position to capitalise and score some strong points. Meanwhile, Ocon went for the counter strategy, starting in eighth and on the hard tyres, he ran long on his opening stint, ensuring he could be fast at the end. Come the chequered flag, Gasly finished in the best of the rest spot of eighth, and Ocon was just behind in ninth. Given Stroll was away down the order this weekend, the team capitalised on their strong car and ensured they maximised their point tool. Realistically, six points for the teams outside of the top four teams in a weekend is a great result, and they'll be very happy with their performance in the USA. Alpine are now level with McLaren in the standings, which is putting them on track for fifth based on form. In addition, I think it's clear that both of their drivers are on a similar level right now when it comes to their race performances. The French team with two French drivers are in a solid midfield position and don't seem to have progressed too far or regressed compared to last season. So overall, it was a solid weekend for Alpine and I think they should receive a green box for this weekend's action. Magnussen proves himself in the Haas. Kevin Magnussen had a strong weekend in the Haas. It was rumoured that the Dane was given a few races by his team to prove himself to be as capable as Hulkenberg or risk losing his seat for 2024. If this kind of comment has been made this early into the season, then that would be a shocking call from Haas. But regardless, Magnussen has been stronger over the last two race weekends. In Miami, he managed to do well to qualify fourth with a very strong banker lap from the initial runs. He kept hold of that position as a result of the red flag late in the session and I thought the Dane did remarkably well to hold off the faster cars behind him. Early on in the race he was fighting with Charles Leclerc's Ferrari and did very well to defend and then even re-overtake the Ferrari driver. These kinds of performances are exactly what the Haas team need and they now have two drivers that are capable of scoring strong results whenever the car is capable. Magnussen ended up 10th just behind the two Alpines which is probably about as good as he and the team could have hoped for. For me, Magnussen has turned it up a gear since the long break, and I think he's deserving of a green box for this weekend. Honourable mentions. I think there's one important honourable mention to make, and it's less about the Miami Grand Prix, and more to do with his consistency. Yuki Tsunoda has finished 10th or 11th in every race so far this year, and it's been great to see that wherever Tsunoda starts, he seems to be racing well to fight for points. The AlphaTauri car is not the best this season, and many predicted De Vries would be the standout driver in that team, but instead it's Sonoda leading the way. It seems like in his third season, something has clicked for the Japanese driver. There's even chat about his timeline for being ready for a Red Bull seat in the future. So the Miami Grand Prix had a mixed-up grid that resulted in a relatively predictable finish. It was definitely more interesting than Azerbaijan, but something is going to have to change soon if this season is going to get more competitive.